So here's a set of limbs that, that is going to a bow hunting outfit. Might be Montana, might be Wyoming. I'm not sure. So this is a standard form. Pretty much how everyone, everyone laminates bows. So I have a standard master form, which is the bottom. Then the laminates have glue applied and they're put on the master form. So whatever the master form under here is, is how the bow is, how the bow ends up. So if you have a flaw in the master form, you're going to have a flaw in every bow. So part of the secret of making excellent bows is getting your forms absolutely perfect, as perfect as you can. Standard laminating process used pretty much exclusively by all bowyers today that make the laminated bow is a system that I have, that I use. I didn't develop it. And it involves stacking the laminates onto the master form, then applying the metal pressure strip I just took off. Then the upper part of the form has a fire hose. So once the form is latched in place, you inflate the fire hose, which puts perfect pressure the entire length and width of the bow. So that's just a basic basic process in the lamination. And then once this is done, I pop that off. I'll clean the glue off the sides, scribe the profile on here, and then I'll show you how I how I profile a bow. What I use for the majority of my of my uh, work on the bow, which is done with the belt sander. One of the secrets of making bows over and over that are the same, you make certain jigs to speed up the operation. So in this case, I'm going to contour a riser on the back. So I use this pattern sander and I contour the riser and the pattern sander uses a template on this side, that's the shape I want, which runs on a bearing down here. So if I do 20 risers on the back, or 50, they're all the same. They're all square, they're all flat. Okay, now after coming from my profiling jig on the pattern sander on the takedown riser, then I drill holes that are in alignment and their precision depth on each riser, then I end up with a hole in the back like this. From there I go to my drilling jig, which is sitting here, and I tap the riser out to accept a threaded insert. So the insert that holds the bow together is threaded and epoxied in solid that you cannot pull it out. It's impossible. After those are in, then I go and drill the alignment pins. And I found out by doing it in two operations, it was more precise because drilling in wood, drill bits have a tendency to tweak one way or another a few thousands. So you had variation in, in the thing by putting the inserts in first then drilling the alignment holes, it's precision. I won't turn this on because of the noise. This is extremely noisy. So if I was going to run this, I would first put my ear protection on, then I would put my shield on. So I have found when cutting fiberglass, because it destroys saw blades, the best way to profile is I scrub the design, my profile, onto the glass. Then using this belt sander, I'm able to take it precisely to the scribe line, which is extremely accurate. After I have the limb profiled, then I'll go over to another jig for drilling the alignment holes in the limb 
which are exactly the same as the alignment hole, alignment pin in the riser, and that way you end up with a bow that's straight to start with, so you don't have to tweak it trying to straighten it. So that's pretty basic operation in making bows. The hard part of making a bow is designing the bow. The making of a bow is simple. The craftsman can learn how to make a bow in two hours. All he has to do is copy an existing bow and go through the simple process of gluing it together and making it. The challenge is in the design, which all the designs of my bows, which are up here in the takedowns, are bows that came off my drawing board. When I started 40 years ago making bows, I copied a couple bows. Then after I did that, I found out I can make a better bow than that. I can do it better. So, designing a bow is pretty simple once you figure out the basics of it. So, when I looked at bows that were manufactured, then I said, I can make a better mousetrap, and I did. And I never quit. I never quit playing with tweaking. If I think something can be add to the performance of a bow, I will tweak it just slightly, but it's it's always something that's very minor and it's something that I have other people test. Tell me if it's better or not. If it's better, I initiate it. If it isn't better, it goes back into the landfill. So <laughs> That's how I work. Okay, when I was in Montana, I had an oil field service business. A friend of mine wanted to learn how to make bows, and I already knew how, but I didn't know how to make them repeatedly that were good. So I worked with him to develop the forms, the techniques to make a good recurve bow. And we ended up with this design, it's all camo. This is my own personal hunting bow from when I lived in Montana. It's the Plainsman, which is what we use as a trademark. And Fred, my friend, continued to make that up till the time of his death last year. So they were an excellent bow. But like I said earlier or later, when I decided to make bows, I wanted to concentrate on something totally different. I didn't want to copy the bow that we'd made hundreds of. I wanted to concentrate on a long bow making it better, and in the process making it shorter, making it easier to handle, easier to get around, quieter, more durable, all the pluses you want in a hunting bow. So, Anyway, the culmination of, of the bows that I have now, the bow I make now, the takedown long bow is a culmination of about 40 bows I've made. I've actually made, tested, threw half of them away or most, kept improving, improving to the culmination of the bow I make today. So it's, it's a 3,500 bow experiment that's finally coming around. If I keep at it, I uh, may work it into something.